Howdy everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to 10,000 and Below, a series where we go to Board Game Geek, huge database on board games, take a look at games that are ranked 10,000 or lower, and I tell you what I think about them. Um, sometimes I know something about them, sometimes they're great games that should be ranked higher, sometimes they're terrible games that need to be where they are, and sometimes they're games I've never heard of, so here we go. We take a look at 100 at a time. Today we're starting with 13801. We don't look at all 100, but we always look at the first and the last. I can't pronounce this first one here. Uh, this is an Adlung Spiel game. So it's a small little box. These almost only come out in German. Uh, Germany, little box the size, you know, just the size of a deck of cards, actually. Uh, this one looks like you're on a flying carpet. It has genies. Oh, look, the genies grow here. Oh, the cute genie. I don't think I've ever said that before. Um, well, it looks interesting enough. Um, you are, um, you're placing a card anywhere on the table and then you're gonna see where the carpets are. Well, that's interesting. I would, I would try this one out. All right, then we got Think It Up, Think It In. We also have Party and Co Extreme and Rest Angel. Let's take a look at these. All right, Think It Up here. Uh, this is a party game. How many professions, starting with the letter M, can you name in a minute? Uh, musician and uh, monster. No, monster's not a profession. Uh, who can come up with the longest first name, starting with U? Uh, well, I was about to say Uwe, but that's probably one of the shortest ones you can come up with. Uh, it doesn't, that sounds like a, an, a kind of generic party game. I'm not sure this one came out in English either. Think it up, that's one is. Party and Co. Extreme. Woo! Oh, this was re implemented by Party and Co. Extreme 3.0, which came out in 2005. And that one didn't even make the rankings. <laughs> that one didn't make the list. Um, but anyhow, um, there's four categories Quiz and Co., Psycho and Co., Show and Co., and Art and Co., Psycho and Co. Anyway. This looks like a kid's game. The components look pretty good, though. I like those, like, little... They're like... They call them plastic peanuts. All right. Rest Angel. This is from Angelo Parazzi. Angelo Parazzi Games, where he designs and draws them himself. This is a game I played. It's... It's a decent game, but it's set in his War Angel universe. War Angel is this really big fantasy thing that he did where you battle army versus army, and I want to say there's like 50 fully fleshed out fantasy armies. Um, and so he brings the same thing into here, same artwork, but now you're wrestling against each other. It's okay. I just... It's been 14 years since this has come out. It's not that great of a game. I like that universe, but did it need a wrestling game? I'm not sure. All right, now we have Lightning Reaction Extreme, Lego Champion, Beatles, and I got to look at this one because it's called It from the Pit. Well, we'll also look at Cluedo Passport to Murder. A lot of games. Lightning Reaction Extreme here. Uh, I don't know if you've ever played this. There's, uh, you grab the handle, and then it, basically someone's going to get shocked. Uh, that's, uh, you have to push the button, and the last person to do so gets a shock. So there's a bit more of a game to it than it just being random. It's a... Decent shock compared to, I know there's ones you stick your finger in. You have, some people use this as a first player marker for a game. I've done so, which just ensures that I go first because no one else wants to do it. And I'm glad because I don't want to do it either. It is uh, it is what it is. Some people hate this sort of thing. Uh, Lego Champion. So this is from the Lego series of games. And it's a racing one. This is one I haven't heard of. Oh, that cover doesn't actually make me want to play the game that's for sure wow that's super generic looking this one of all the lego games this one looks the most like oh i built a track that's unfortunate that's probably why it's ranked lower beetles it's been a long time since i played this one i think my review went up yeah well 10 years ago a back of spiel but mayfair picked it up uh and i said that it was an okay game um, you are trying to get preferences of food, so you're flipping them, looking at them, taking them back until the light turns on. Ah, it's been a long time since I played this one. I remember it a little bit. Yeah, it is not a game I really have a desire. It's not that it's bad. It's just another speed game. I don't know that I like the artwork that much either. It from the Pit. 
That's kind of a cool box cover. It's a motorized game here from Milton Bradley. Ah, yeah, it is one of those games as a kid. I would love this thing. Does that hand reach out and grab your Indiana Jones? Ah, oh, look, they're holding hands. I want to see the thing grab something. Uh, at any time during the game, if the monster grabs your explorer and pulls down the pit hole, that explorer is out of play. So it could win the game. It sounds like a silly, fun game, but I've never heard of this one before. Cluedo, Passport to Murder. Same thing as Super Cluedo Challenge, all right? It takes place in a railroad station in Istanbul. Uh, there's nine suspects, nine weapons, and nine rooms. Oh, so this is like Super Clue. Well, that doesn't actually sound so bad. It still has that stupid move thing. There's now more suspects. Miss Peach, Mr. Brown, and Earl Grey. Earl Grey. <laughs> There's an axe, a bottle of poison, and a blunderbuss, and then more locations. This sounds like it'd be better than Clue because the more stuff there is, the more deduction there is in the game. Yeah, look at all that stuff there. So there's three, six, nine. So that's quite a bit of combinations that could be done there. I like all the little pieces there. Sounds better than the ordinary Clue. All right, let's keep going. Partners. Ubongo Mini has a ton. I want to take a look at this new Trico. That looks like an interesting little abstract game. Ute Nori. And what else do we want to look at down here? Incredibrawl. I played this one. All right, so let's jump up here. First, the Partners. The Partners is a game that Z likes. He says it's very casual. Um, but that it was a, it's, it's an interesting game. I know that this one's actually being kickstarted soon, a, a redone version of it. It's like Parcheesi and Sorry, but uh, you have four cards and there's a partnership game involved. It doesn't look interesting at all to me, but like I said, Z said that there was some pretty nice elements to this game. So, yeah, we'll have to see when the Kickstarter comes up. Ubongo Mini. So this is a, a version of Ubongo. Uh, just a small version of it. If you don't know what this is, you essentially get a bunch of shapes and you're trying to fill up these cards. It's like a, a puzzle style game. You're trying to fit them, fill them faster than other people. I am curious why it's ranked so low because Ubongo has a decent amount of ratings. Why? Let's see. Oh, there's just a lot of, like, no, like only four people have rated it a 10, 283 people rated it a 6. So a lot of people, a lot of people are just ranking it normal kids it's portable it's too simplified to be challenging it's not as good as the main game basically okay well there you go this is a really players move by sliding ortho orthogonally or diagonally until blocked by the edge of the board or another piece arrange your pieces three orthogonally or diagonally that's interesting so i could slide but if i slide there he'll slide there Interesting. I'd play this. It feels very solvable, doesn't it? But it sounds like a fun little game to play. I thought I saw it like, uh, yeah, it looks like there's some really nice versions of it. <laughs> I don't. Um, this looks like an interesting game to try out. Yut Nuri um, is a public domain game. It originated in Korea. I have to say, I don't know that I ever saw this when I was in Korea. Oh, never mind. Yes, I have. I saw this. I did not see the, the nicer version of it. These are like dice, these sticks. You, you throw them together, and some of them will turn face up, some will turn face down. It's a very traditional thing. Yeah, I definitely saw this in Korea. Okay. I don't think I ever played it, though. From what I understand, it's a really basic game. Incredibrawl. This is a game that came out in 2014. You've just a bunch of people who are fighting each other. It's just a very, it's a rock, paper, scissors style, take that game. The artwork is good, but the game itself is a little meh for me. So, nah. I do like the art a lot, though. All right, let's continue on down here. Jenga Ultimate. Well, i got to take a look at that one. Take your daughter to the slaughter. It's a rhyming title, and then Wick, Witkesy, which I've reviewed back f uh, five years ago. So Jenga Ultimate, what's the difference here? Uh, the difference, you roll a die to see what color you remove. That's Jenga Ultimate? Isn't that just 
Jenga Uno. Is it taller than normal? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, whatever. Take your daughter to the slaughter. This is a Spanish redevelopment of the game Once Upon a Time, the storytelling card game, which is a nice little game. Um, the new setting is slasher movies. Fine, but why would the... All right, so we got the church. Take your daughter to the slaughter. <laughs> Such a, it comes in a... Yeah, that's a little gory there. All right, weird, weird, weird things we're finding. Witkesy, ah, yes, I remember this one. You're restoring paintings by a famous Polish artist, Witkesy, and it's an okay game. There's some neat ideas. You're basically building a grid here, trying to connect. Your cards have different parts of the paintings on them, and you're trying to place them so that you can form the paintings themselves. It's a cool idea. Um, Probably even more so if you're like a fan of this specific artist. And I, I didn't dislike the game, but it, I just found it to be okay. I like the concept, though, a lot. All right, Heresy. I would fight the dragon. Delphi. Wow, we're taking a look at a lot of games from this particular one. This one's just called Colors. Castelli, that has 207 ratings. And then Agora. All right, we're halfway through. So let's jump over here to Heresy first. If you know how to play the magic, you're halfway here in this blatant magic clone. <laughs> I like how that's in the description here, a board game geek. There's two areas, your angels, blah, blah, blah. Let's take a look at the cards. Yeah, I really, really dislike the graphic design of this. Oh, and they're mixing their art styles too. That's, that's always a, uh, blah. I'm not interested in that one at all. I would fight the dragon, and I feel like there's a butt there. Bluffing and bluster. You want to get someone else. Well, someone else is going to fight the dragon. Don't let it be you. That's a fun theme. When did this come out? 2018. I've not heard of it. It has the look of a small indie game, right? That. Not sure I'm sold on the artwork of it, but I do like the idea of bluffing and stuff. Well, apparently, we did a summer preview of this two years ago. <laughs> I don't remember it at all, actually. But, yeah, there's not a lot of information here. Delphi. This is a... Oh, I've seen this box, actually. Gunter Burkhardt. Um, have I played a version of this? No? Uh, the, you're one of the deities. You are... Um, cards are 2 to 10. You want to collect the most fame points? Huh. I know I've seen this before. Maybe I haven't played it because the action, action cards are not in English. But I really like how this box looks. It's like a long, you can see it there in the picture. It's a long, thin, black box with embossed uh, artwork. It looks really cool. Huh. But it's rated pretty low. Colors. Ah, I remember playing this one. This is uh, basically... It's a abstract strategy game, and you want to create a triangle of three different colors. So, um, and then there's different ways to move them on the board. So you have different colors, and each player, I believe, is one of the shapes and stuff. Guess you can play it online. It's fine. It's a decent game. It's not great. And of course, they use that minutes to learn, months to master. I hate that phrase. You stick that in your game, you lose a point already. All right, Castelli, another Gunter Burkhardt game. Now, just in case you think all his games are low-rated, let's take a look here. He has Ohm, which is very highly regarded, in the top 1,000. Uh, Potato Man is a really fun little um, trick-taking game. Darjeeling is a good game. Uh, so he has quite a few good games on here. He also has a lot of games that are farther down the list. But this one, you're making castles in different locations, which sounds like a typical Euro game. That's not a bad look, right? That looks interesting. It looks like a typical mid-weight Euro-style game. That's Castelli. Agora, which is not the only game with this name, since Agora means market. Uh, this one here is from Spielworks. Okay, Spielworks tends to make heavier games. Um... I don't know, though, because the people who tend to play these tend to rate them highly. Let's, let's see what the, the comments on this one look like. 
a very bland game. It may be a plain box, but it's a good game. I suppose it's typical Spielworks. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. Looks lighter than it is. So there's some positives, but there's a lot of average. And average is not good these days. Alrighty, let's continue on as we go down here. Time Bomb 2. That's That was remade in a Don't Mess With Cthulhu, I believe. Uh, Oktoberfest. That's interesting. This game did not get a lot of buzz. Star Wars The Han Solo card game. Pokemon Master Trainer has 1,160 reviews. And then we got Nada. All right, so let's jump over here. Oktoberfest. This one just has a really fun-looking box cover. I don't think the game looks as fun as the box cover does, though. It's, it's okay. It's a little bland, though. This one did not get much buzz, and it came out from Real Grande. I, wonder, I don't know why. Star Wars The Han Solo Card Game. I've not played this one. Disney Theme Park Merchandise and Hasbro. When did this come out? 2018. So this one has the weird Sabak cards that they use. That, I don't know, this one almost seems like esoteric. Like, yeah, you got to figure out this weird game. But I guess it's not ranked very highly either. But hey, if you're a Star Wars fan, there you go. Pokemon Master Trainer. Um, so this is not Pokemon, the card game. This is a big board game. Wow. Huh. There's another one I feel like I should have heard of, but I haven't. It looks a little like it's a game made for the mass market. Yeah, it's made by Hasbro. Wow, though, a thousand ratings? That's a lot. Let's take a look. Ratings break down. There's a decent amount of 10s. A lot of 4s, though. Childhood memories. Nostalgia game. Very dated and unforgiving. This came out in 99. That's right. A lot of people would have played this as a child at this point in time. That's interesting. All right, Nada. This is a small dice game from Blue Orange where you're claiming matching dice as possible. Um, and as soon as there's no more matching dice, you shout nada and you claim the rest. You're just rolling them. It's a silly, fast, fun game. Really high quality dice. This is, I remember this is one of the first games that really brought, brought blue orange to my attention. Alrighty, we continue down here as we look. Um, Treachery in a Pocket. That's a good name for a game. Igor, the Mad Scientist Lament. Sounds like a song. Organized Crime. We got to talk about that one. Brewmaster the Craft Beer Game, Redemption City of Bondage, D. Hans, and Terror Eyes. Wow, a lot of games we're looking at in this particular grouping. All right, Igor the Mad Scientist Lament. Um, it's not easy being a mad scientist, the long nights. You have incompetent minions, but you want to remain supreme. Blah, blah, ha, 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 ha. This is from Game Crafters. Well, I got enough. Is this a take that style game? Yeah, it looks like it. Bwah ha 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 ha. Meh. All right, organized crime. All right, so my organized crime looks like this, which is really one of the worst box covers there is. It's definitely, uh, they found three people and said, pretend to be gangsters. <laughs> but here's the thing. As dated as this game is, and it is dated, I just found it to be entertaining. It is mean as all get out. You have some mobster pieces. You move around. You're trying to control stuff. You can attack other people. There's rolling dice. I don't get why I like it. It's not a game I should like. But it's very entertaining. Um, uh, and if you ever see this one at a thrift store, it's worth a lark for sure. Brewmaster to Craft Beard Game. This is from Cold Creek Publishing Company. This came out in 2001. And you're just going to put cards together and make beer on a laminated board. Oh, the, the components aren't too hot here. The most fun I've ever had making beer without putting the boots on, says this quote. They got actual brewers to say this game was fun. Hmm. Looks, I don't know, doesn't look that interesting, though. Redemption, City of Bondage. So this is from Rob Anderson and Richard Borg, of all people, from Cactus Game Design. Um, 
I had this game, but I never did get around to playing it. It's a Christian theme board game. Doesn't look that great, frankly. And obviously looks very similar to the CCG. Look at those dice. I think this one might have done better if it just looked better. It just doesn't look that interesting. Maybe some of you have played it. I have not. The Hans. Um, this is a game that has quite a few ratings. 162. Wow, this one looks like the typical Euro game there is. The, from the cover to the board. It doesn't look like this one ever came out in English. Mm, interesting. Terrorize. Uh, you're going to roll these dice here, and then you got to put them in here to match the card. And so you're going to, you are trying to match these cards with these eyes. It's a silly kids game. I thought it was fun for kids. All right, Sedition Wars, Battle for Alabaster. Um, Touche. Uh, Zwergen Zihan. I've played Hide and Eek. Oh, there's an Ender Game Battle School. I'm going to take a quick look at that one, too. And then we'll take a look at Admirals, which I've ranked at two. And finally, we'll end by taking a look at Doubles Wild. All right, Sedition Wars. Now, this was a pretty big game. I remember this one from Cool Mini or Not. Everyone knows Come On Games at this point in time, and they're big games. And why haven't you heard of Sedition Wars? Because this is essentially the definition of a bomb. It's a tactical game for two players. Um, I feel like I may have played this or at least learned a little bit about how to play it at uh, the Come On Expo one time, but this one just did not. This one did not do very well. It I, it was on discount pretty quickly. I think now even now you can probably find it for an inexpensive price. I don't know much more about it than that, but it's just interesting. Not everything Come On does is gold, and this is an example of that. Touche from 19, uh, 1977. You have transparent pieces with metal discs in them. You have to arrange them, but there are magnetic strips. When you place a piece, it could, might stay, but it might flip. I have played this. I played this as a kid. I remember this game. Oh, wow, that's cool. I forgot about this one. This is neat. Here, it's called Magic 4. Yeah, I'm giving this one a 7. I like this game. That was a fun game. There's luck, obviously, with the magnets, but that's a neat thing. It was nominated for the Spiel des Jahres in 1979. That's cool. I haven't seen this game in ages. I played this. I owned this. It was at a thrift store. I remember that. I remember those magnetic strips very much. Neat. All right, Zwerg and Zion. Garden gnomes are awakening. Oh, I thought that was my eyes for a second. That's just not a good... That's oh, weird, these pictures of garden gnomes. Meh. All right, hide and eek. This is a kid's game, and you're rolling dice and moving the mouse around the board. For kids, this is a really fun little game. 100 elephants and one mouse. Great artwork, too, from uh, Game Right. They, they make some good kid's games. Ender's Games Battle School. This one came from Cryptozoic. I remember when this came out, and I was like, ooh, we, I like Ender's Game, and then I heard nothing else about it. And it doesn't look like your typical Cryptozoic-style game. But this one sure disappeared quickly. Hmm. Matt Hyra is the designer of that. He also designed um, the DC comic deck building game and GKR heavy hitters. Uh, so he has a lot of stuff under his belt. This one just didn't take off. Admirals, the reason I gave this a, a two rating is because this is um, literally a ripoff, a bad ripoff of Stratego. Yes, it's different in some ways, whatever. It is a ripoff of Stratego and with bad components, so boo. Doubles Wild, this is the last one here. You place your marbles on a board, three in a row scores a point, four, two. Doubles are always wild, so you're rolling dice. This sounds very, very mass markety, but it also looks cool. I like all those marbles. That was a Mensa Select. Meh. This sounds like the kind of game you'd find in someone's cabinet. And then you're like, oh, what's this? And you might, you might pull it out and play it. That's what this looks like. As a kid, I would have played this two times and then used those marbles to make cool marble ramps. Neat. I see you roll the dice and you pick where they go. 
based on what you've rolled. Doesn't sound like you have a lot of choice, though. If you roll doubles, I guess you get to pick where you want. Not a good. That's weird. All right. Well, anyway, that's it. That is another set in the 10,000 and below series. Thanks so much for watching. If you think there's games that I should have talked about in this particular group of 100 but did not, mention them in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tom Bassel. We'll see you next time.